Hey guys and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video we'll discuss a very interesting topic regarding the optimization of PyInstaller EXEs. If you're familiar with PyInstaller, you already know that the EXEs generated by it can get quite big, like several hundred MB, and the load times can be quite big, like 5 to 10 seconds, if you're using a lot of libraries and, you know, like big ones like matplotlib, numpy, scipy, or even libraries like PyTorch for machine learning and data science. So yeah, so one way, a very efficient way and probably the best way actually to reduce this size and speed up the load time is to use a virtual environment when compiling your PyInstaller EXE. Now what exactly is a virtual environment? Well, I'm gonna explain this throughout the video, okay? I could give you the definition right now, but it wouldn't make much sense. So let's start and I'll show you what exactly it does. And by the end of this video, you'll have understood exactly how to use it and why we use it. All right, so the first thing I'll do is explain why PyInstaller creates such big EXEs. It's not actually your fault. It's not that your application is that big because even simple applications that you write can end up 100 MB plus, And you're like, why? Like this code right here, it's only like 80 lines of code, but it's gonna generate an EXE of size uh, 110, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 110. That doesn't make sense, right? But if you look at this, we actually have libraries here like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, and Takinter. So these libraries can end up bloating the size up quite a bit. It doesn't matter how much code you have, it just matters what libraries you're using. Now, one way we can reduce this again is virtual environments. I'll show you something. I'm gonna do pip list. And what this does is shows me a list of all the libraries I have in my Python environment that I've installed. And as you can see, it's quite a bit. It's a lot of libraries. And a lot of these have nothing to do with my code. Like, let's take a look at PyQt5 and PyQt6. They have nothing to do with our code, Pygame. That's for games. It has nothing, nothing to do with our code. So there's so many libraries here that we don't need. And the problem is that PyInstaller is compiling all of these libraries into our EXE, which really bloats up the size because that's how PyInstaller works to ensure maximum compatibility. So the obvious thing to do would be to maybe set up a new Python installation where you don't have these extra libraries but that's a big hassle. Are you gonna download another version of Python that can cause other issues like conflicts with your current Python version? So that's a real pain. And I do not recommend that. The best solution to this is virtual environments where you set up a virtual, you know, virtual environment, a virtual version, a virtual copy of your, Py of your Python installation that is like a fresh new install. Okay, and now this is gonna be really simple. Because in Python 3.1 onwards, Python now includes a built-in way of creating virtual environments. You don't need to install any third-party libraries or something, so that's a, an extra step reduced. What we'll do is use the venv library, okay? Again, it's built-in, so you don't need to worry. Okay, so that was most of the theory done, and let's begin the implementation. So now we're going to create a virtual environment inside this virtual underscore ENVs folder of mine. Okay, I already have a few virtual environments in there. We're going to create a new one now. Now, the thing is, to create a virtual environment, you need to call a command from the command line. Like Python, um, like, you know, just like you do other commands like Python dash V and so on and so forth. So we're going to call a command like that. Now, I'm just going to show you a universal solution first for people who do not have python added to pat because i know some people do not for some reason well uh let me just show you i'm going to open up my environment variables and pull out my python installation path from there um, obviously those of you who do not have python added to pat go find where your python installation is and then you know extract it from there okay copy paste the path from there and then just do this, okay, paste it over here, do python.exe, then dash m, then v and v. Oh, and wait, one second, let me just copy paste that. I need to navigate over to my folder. All right, 
now I'll copy paste that over here. And then we did V and V, the name of the, of the library we're going to use to create the virtual environment. And then we type in the name of the virtual environment. I'll call it tutorial. Okay. Now I'll hit enter and this should take about half a minute or so. And it's going to be created. Okay. We can see it already over here. Okay. And just a minute. This should be done. All right, now it's done over here. We can see the folder. Okay, now I'll show you one more way of doing it, the normal way of doing it. If you have Python added to path, which should be the case for most of you, just do Python dash M V N V. No need to write out the full file path. Then you can do something like tutorial two, and this will create a new virtual environment just like we did, you know, over here. Okay, perfectly normal. All right, so I'm just gonna delete this now. Okay, we don't need that. And let me just show you what this looks like. Okay, our virtual environment. We have a CS CFG file here. There's a scripts folder in here where we have a bunch of scripts. We have python.exe, which is, you know, the local copy of our Python installation, the virtual copy. Then we have an activate file over here that we'll use to activate the virtual environment. Then lib, where all of our libraries that we install in this virtual environment, that's where they're gonna go. And I'm not sure what include is for, but yeah. Let's begin. Okay, now what we need to do first is activate our virtual environment. So uh, this, the command for it can vary a little bit. What you need to do is tutorial, uh, whoops, tutorial, and then backslash bin for Linux, or if you're in Windows like me, you'll do scripts, then activate, okay? And there, we know that this is working because this tutorial has appeared over here, which is the name of our virtual environment. And by the way, if this doesn't work for you, do dot .bat, okay, because this is a bit random. I had to do dot .bat when I was doing it on PowerShell, I think, but I'm using the VS Code terminal right now, so this is what's working. Dot .bat does not work here, so just, you know, try different commands. Uh, do it without .bat, do, do it with .bat. One of them should work. Okay, so now what we'll do is, uh, well, we have a virtual environment set up. So what we need to do actually is try and run our code. Okay, this graphing app.py file. We're gonna run it inside our virtual environment. Okay, so let's do that. Python, and then we'll do graphing app, graphing app.py. And remember to keep uh, this graphing app.py in the folder where your virtual environment is, not inside the folder. Don't put it inside the virtual environment. Let me just show you what it looks like in the file explorer. Okay, we have virtual environment over here. I'm, I'm gonna go into it. And here's the graphing app.py file. And here's our tutorial virtual environment. Okay, now I'm gonna do this. And look at this, it says no module named NumPy. That's because our virtual environment is very new. There is no, uh, you know, library inside. So now what we need to do is actually sit here and install all of these libraries in our virtual environment okay all of these pandas table pandas matplotlib uh, we don't need, we don't need to do take care because it's already part of the uh, you know it's already part of the standard python installation and oh and i almost forgot to do this but do pip list again and you'll see that only two libraries here show up obviously the standard libraries are included uh, they aren't shown here but these are the ones that are installed normally you know the, the ones that we install so there are only two over here as compared to the, like 30 or 40 that showed up previously so you can already see how exactly this is going to benefit us how exactly this is going to benefit pi installer okay so what i'll do now is use this requirements.txt file you could just sit here and manually install each of these like pip install pandas and so on and so forth, but that's gonna be a bit slow. And the requirements.txt file is a really great way of, oh, and look at that, it's installing NumPy as well, because I guess Pandas uses NumPy, and well, you can't, that can't be helped, I guess. Okay, let me just uh, use this requirements.txt file. It's a great way of maintaining version control, because uh, matplotlib especially has this issue where, uh, code can br break between versions. Like I've often sent code to other people 
for matplotlib and it doesn't work with them because they have a different version. So this requirements.txt file helps ensure that everyone is using the same version. So if you deploy your PyInstaller exe, if you use this, you know, requirements.txt file, like I will right now, Python R, sorry, pip R, I think it's install first install r requirements.txt. So you can run this command on your client's PC, okay? And this is automatically gonna install the correct versions that you know work with your application. So I'm just gonna run this command now and this is gonna take some time because it's doing all these libraries now. And it'll automatically upgrade NumPy because I think what Pandas installed was NumPy 1.21. Right now we need NumPy 1.23. So it's actually gonna you know, change that. It's gonna upgrade it. It'll upgrade or downgrade it so that it uh, fits this, fits this version. And that's what version control is all about. So I'm just gonna wait for this to be done. I'll pause the video right here and then resume it once all the installation is complete. All right, so now we have all the libraries installed. And let's run our application again, and this should hopefully work. Okay, I'll just do Python over here, graphing app.py. Okay, and there's a chance I did miss some libraries in the requirements.txt file. Oh, okay, great, it works. So here we have our graphing application. It's working correctly, that is great. So this is basically how we use a virtual environment. And now we actually get to the real deal, which is, you know, actually converting this to an exe and then observing how much of a space improvement we get because i told you before i converted this already without a virtual environment and i got a 110 mb exe file okay i was using the one file mode in pi installer one there is roughly the same it produces around 120 to 130 mb okay so and let's just see okay i included pi installer in autopy to exe in here so let's go ahead and run autopy to exe, which is a GUI interface for Py installer. Okay. And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, this basically just uses Py installer. It's a, just a GUI, a UI that we can use. So I'm just gonna put our, um, also wait, I might run into issues if autopy to exe ends up using the wrong one the wrong Python installation. I don't think there'll be an issue because it's being called in our virtual environment. So yeah, there shouldn't be any issue. At least we'll find out. If the exe is the same size, then that means, you know, it messed up. Hopefully not though. Okay, so here we go. I added in, let me just expand this a bit so you can see the pi installer command clearly. Okay, for those of you who are using pi installer in the console. Okay, I'll do one file over here, then window based. And we don't have any data files or anything, so no need to do that. And let's just hit the button and hope this works. All right, now I'm just gonna pause the video over here and resume it again once this is complete, okay? But one more thing I will mention is that we have other optimization techniques that we can use, all right? This is not the only optimization technique. There's another technique, uh, a very popular one, called UPX, it's an EXE packer. And there's an option in Py Installer that we can simply, you know, use to connect UPX. We just download UPX. It's a simple zip file. We connect it to our Py Installer command, you know, just like we do normally. We do uh, dash dash UPX dir, then pass in the dir of our UPX exe file. So this can also reduce the size of our exes by like 20% on average, 10 to 30%, depending on your application. So that's also one thing. I have a video on that and I will include it in the description below. So if you, the virtual environment doesn't bring down the size as much as you want to, then you can always try using UPX. You can use both of them together to bring the size down, you know, as much as possible. All right, so yeah, let me just resume the video once this completes. It should take about five minutes in total. All right, here we go, it's done. So I'll click on open output folder. It's gonna open it over here. And it actually opened us in the same folder where I have all my other stuff, all my other outputs. Uh, so I'll just click on graphing app.exe over here. And you can see it's 80 MB, 
80 MB as compared to 110 MB. So we got basically a good improvement. Let's just check the size. That's 80,000 KB, but yeah, it's 78.4 MB. So how much of an improvement was that? At least 30%, right? So yeah, that's pretty good. And if you combine this with, with UPX, I'm sure you can get this down to about 60. And that's pretty good. Because obviously you can't go below a certain point. You can't go below 40 or 50 really, because there's the Python standard library that's in there. Okay, and virtual environments are actually a really big deal, okay? Because this was not maybe the best example, but I've seen people who, you know, have commented on this, but they have reported differences from like 700 MB down to 100 MB because maybe they had some really big libraries installed like PyTorch or something, and that was really bloating up their EXE size. This is actually a relatively new Python installation of mine. Uh, I caught this device only a few months ago, so that's why I don't have many libraries installed. So that's why the difference wasn't that much. So this is like the, the least possible improvement you can see. The average improvement is going to be a lot more than just 30%. Okay, expect like half, you know, at least half. You can at least reduce the size by about half. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys found this useful. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. If there's some troubles you're having, if there's some other Pi installer content you want to see, do let me know. I'll also leave re re relevant links in the description below. Okay, see you guys in the next one.